Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're going to do another recipe out of the Town Crier recipe book. 300 lucky low cost prize winning recipes. Um, this is a depression era cookbook put out by a flour company, the Town Crier Family Flour Company, um, Midland Flour Milling Company actually of Kansas City, Missouri. And we're gonna do a pie um, that from a, from a research standpoint has been very difficult. Um, it's called Dixie Pie. From a research standpoint, there's a huge variation in Dixie Pies um, or pies called Dixie Pie. The only common denominator is they're pies and they're called Dixie Pie. <laughs> and they're, that's it. That's where all of it ends. Some of them are akin to a custard. Um, most of them though are a sugar pie. This one definitely is a sugar pie. A lot of them are essentially a pecan pie. Um, a lot of them are straight up pecan pies. Well, you know, there's no mistaking it. You look at the recipe and you go, well, that's a pecan pie. Um, generally though, a pecan pie pre the use of corn syrup. So we'll just get going here and cream together the butter and sugar. And I get to use the copper bowl. And several of the Dixie pie recipes that I came across had a chocolate component. This one does not. Um, they all pretty much though did have nuts. Most of them were pecans, like I said. Some of them were peanuts, um, while others were walnuts or whatever nut or nut meat was was available where you lived. Um, so whites into this bowl because we need to whip them. Egg yolks go in and get beaten in. So this really is all over the map. It's a it's a meaningless. It's a meaningless title, um, really. If you went into probably a hundred places that served Dixie pie in this time period, you would get a hundred different pies. Today, 2023, you're more than likely going to get a pie that is uh, a mix of pecans and chocolate. Okay, so we'll separate this egg as well. And yolk goes in. Okay, now I need two tablespoons of milk. And uh, I really like this little measuring glass for measuring those small amounts. That goes in and gets mixed in with the butter and the egg. And then I will start whipping the egg whites. I've got the copper bowl out. I really like the copper bowl. I really like what the copper bowl brings to whipped egg whites says to beat them stiff. And every time I do them in the copper bowl, people say, oh, you didn't whip them stiff enough. Here's the thing. There's only so stiff that you can get them in a copper bowl. Um, you'll never get them because of the chemical reaction that's happening. You'll never get an egg white to the point that if you took a beater and you beat them in a glass bowl. Um, in a glass bowl, you can beat them too far until they become dry and crumbly. And that's what most people associate with a stiff beaten egg white. They become dry and crumbly. And then you notice like they're weeping in the bottom of the bowl and there's liquid in the bottom of the bowl. That's the egg white separating. And you don't want that to happen. This gives you a nice, really silky smooth, not quite as stiff as you would get in a glass bowl, um, but properly whipped egg white. Okay, almost there with the egg whites. Doesn't take long um, in a copper bowl to get them nice and whipped up. So almost there, but it's time to add in chopped dates and the chopped nuts. Okay, so that um, is a nice silky, stiffly beaten egg white. I'm supposed to fold it in. That's one of those instructions that often just drives me nuts. Um, let me get the let me get the pie plate out of the out of the freezer. Because uh, in a lot of cases, like this is a really stiff dough slash batter. You're not really going to be able to fold egg whites into this because there really isn't much that you can fold. So do your best. Do the folding action like you were taught. 
or just stir it in. Um, it's one of those myths I probably should address. Anyway, let's get the egg whites in here. Now I've got an eight inch pie pan. I have made a lard pie dough. I didn't make the lard pie dough um, from the recipe, but they call for lard. And there's a company here in Canada called Tender Flake that sells pure, 100% pure lard for baking. You can get it in every grocery store in Canada, pretty much. Um, and I just use the recipe off of their box for the pie dough, because it's amazing. And it's, why, why play with something that you know is perfect to begin with? So I've lined an eight inch pie pan. Um, I find in this time period, eight inch is better than a nine inch and eight inch is better than a nine inch deep dish. Uh, some of those deep dish pie pans from today, nine inch, the pie filling gets lost in the bottom because there's just not enough. People were making smaller pies back in the day. Okay, so fold in the last of those egg whites. And we'll fill the pie shell. Okay, so the oven is preheated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. This is one of those pies you start at a really high temperature and then you turn it down after about 10 minutes to 350, I think it says, or 325, down to 350, and then you go for about a half an hour. This is in a pie tin. Mm. Oh, that's sweet. It's going to be really good, though. This is in a pie tin rather than a pie plate. And I have a pizza stone in the oven. I've been playing with the idea of going back to a tin rather than the glass or ceramic plates, and I'm getting much better bottom crusts. Okay, so while this is baking, I'm going to lick that mixing bowl clean. It tastes really good. Ooh, Glenn, hey friends. Hey Jules. So like a sugar pie or something like that? Well, officially, this recipe book calls it a Dixie pie. A Dixie pie. But that, okay. Uh, so it's a it's a sugar pie. It's a pecan pie. It's a date sugar pie. It's a date sugar pie with pecans. It's a butter tart. It could be anything. <laughs> yes. I mean, it's it's gonna be gooey. I think it's gonna be gooey. Whoops. And not as gooey as you thought. Ooh. So, a bit like a raisin pie. It's a bit like a raisin. It's a bit like a whole bunch My of pies. My family loves raisin pie. One of the problems with this pie is when I was researching Dixie, Dixie pie, mm -hmm. there was no consistency of what a Dixie pie was. It was all over the map. It's so many different things. So I don't know whether this is, they just made this up and put the label on it because, you know, it's got sugar and pecans in it. But it doesn't even call for pecans. It just calls for nuts. You can call it whatever you want. Call it whatever you want. Doesn't matter. As long as it tastes good. I'm pretty sure it's going to taste good. Excellent. I'm ready. All right. I'm going to actually turn it around. So you go ahead and taste it. We got a pretty good bottom crust. High temperature with the pizza stone. Oh, in, oh I've in, made a mess. I lost all my stuff. And the, and the metal um, pie tin, not a pie plate, gives you a really good bottom crust. So I would say that it is more pecan pie slash butter tart than sugar pie. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that it is very good. So that's the, that is very interesting. The texture is really not, so it's got whipped egg whites. Folded okay. In. And those whipped egg whites give you a really loose texture. Firm. But, but it didn't, it didn't like run out. Yes. And it didn't congeal into like a hard sugary thing. Mm hmm. It's very, that's a really good pie. And it's interesting because you've used dates, I'm mm -hmm. assuming. And so you've got that date flavor, but yeah. not like our date custard pie. No, just completely. completely different than that, but still the hint of dates. Yeah. That's a really good pie. Yeah. That's a winner. So you can do that in an eight inch deep dish pie. Somehow we had two pieces and it's almost gone. Yeah. So I don't really know, I understand how big of a piece we took. <laughs> eight inch deep dish, eight inch deep dish, nine inch shallow. Um, and you can choose depending on your understanding of Piaget's theory of conservation. Okay, then. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.